This is the solution video for section 6.4, problem number 5. All right, so I see the integral of 3 sine x over 1 plus 2 cosine x dx. <clears throat> All right, so when you see a problem like this, uh, some people look at it and they try to, you know, split it up or whatever, but because there's not a single term in the denominator, you can't split it up. So then the next thing you need to think about is a u substitution. So now, generally speaking, it's better to take the function inside of a function, but it doesn't look like one of these functions is inside of another function. And so now you need to think which one of these functions might result in the other function's derivative. So you want to choose the denominator here because the derivative of 1 plus 2 cosine x <clears throat> is going to involve sine. Okay, but why wouldn't you choose sine? So if you think u equals 3 sine x, why wouldn't you choose that? Well, because you don't have a cosine times the dx. You actually have uh, a cosine in the denominator times dx. So that'd actually be like a secant, but not even a secant because it's 1 plus 2 cosine x all in the denominator. So that definitely doesn't work. All right, so then that means you have what? 1 over u. All right, so du is what? Well, uh, the derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of 2 cosine x is 2 times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x dx. All right, so now you had the 3, so I'm going to put that out front. Then you had sine x dx. You need a negative 2, so a negative 2 there, which means you need to divide by a negative 2 on the outside. So I have negative 3 halves integral of 1 over u du. Now, another important thing right, is that when I have 1 over u, I do not write it as u to the negative first, okay? Why? Because that might make you think that the integral is u to the 0 over 0, and that is not the case. So do not write u to the negative first. Leave it as 1 over u, which will hopefully prompt you to remember that the integral of 1 over u is natural log of the absolute value of u, and then, of course, plus c. So negative 3 halves natural log of the absolute value of u, which is 1 plus 2 cosine x plus c. So then, anytime you have the natural log of the absolute value of something, you need to consider whether or not the thing in here is strictly negative. So, or sorry, strictly positive, which would necessitate no absolute value bars there. So 1 plus 2 cosine x. Well, let's think about cosine x. Remember, cosine x is a function that looks like this, right? The 2 makes it go from positive 2 down to negative 2. And the 1 plus is going to shift it up. So that means it's going to go from negative 1 up to 3, which means it is not strictly positive because it still has a negative portion. So you still need the absolute value. 